Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a default install of CentOS 7 uh, using an encrypted uh, drive. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And I've got a guide developed too that I've been writing out. It's available on our website, uh, rabbitcake.club. And um, I'm essentially going to be following this guide as I go through the process of installing uh, CentOS. So the first thing you need to decide is where you want your server located. Uh, locating your server at home has a lot of benefits. You have physical control over the actual hardware your server is running on. Uh, you have a sense of who has access to it, right? You can keep an eye on the hardware, know what you're running, and make sure it's not compromised or modified. Uh, the downside of that is you get usually uh, a public IP address you know, that changes every time your internet connection restarts. Uh, that makes it difficult for other computers to actually reliably connect to your own. Uh, that's not a huge issue uh, with the Ripple network because your computer can, you know, phone out to the Ripple network. You can, you know, have a dynamic IP address uh, for other applications that are running a web server, running an email server, things like that. Uh, it really can be quite a problem unless you use a VPN and port forwarding and uh, other complex solutions like that. Anyway, uh, for this demonstration, we're going to install our server on a uh, professional hosting company. Uh, on a uh, virtual private server. So we're not going to be running this on bare metal, we're going to be running this on a VPS, which means that uh, we share resources with other servers to some extent. Uh, disk encryption is particularly important in that kind of instance because you never know if the hard drive is going to change, right? Someone could, else could get your drive space, uh, you know, or memory that your uh, system was using and potentially uh, take out private keys, you know, private information, things like that. Uh, disk encryption can help prevent that. So we're going to start here. Uh, I'm using uh, Volter, and I personally enjoy that I can install my own operating system with them. Uh, I actually uploaded my own CentOS disk image uh, from the CentOS download, download page. Um, and that's going to let me set up the install the way that I want to. So we're going to start out, choose a location for the server. Uh, we'll maybe go with New York. Uh, I'm going to use my custom uh, ISO that I uploaded here. It's a Cent OS 7, uh, and I use the minimal install. Uh, we're not going to have any kind of screen on this since the server's in the data center. Everything is going to be through the terminal. Uh, so the minimal install provides you know, just the basic what you need uh, to run the Cent OS 7 server. By not having extra packages, you reduce your attack vector. You make it harder for someone to compromise the system. Um, so I do really recommend starting out with the least, uh, the least you know that you need. Uh, to run the uh, Ripple servers, they really are resource hogs. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, you know eight gigs of memory in there, uh, which would end up costing forty dollars a month. Works it will be to keep the server running after this video, which I don't plan to. Enable IPv6. Um, not going to do any backups or DDoS protection. Uh, I am going to enable private networking because in another video we're actually going to cluster this uh, Ripple D node with another Ripple D node. I'm going to leave the firewall group blank for now, but I'm going to go manage that a little bit later. And we will call this, we'll call it Ripple Demo 1.rabbitkit.com. So it looks like everything is ready to go and we'll go ahead and get that installing. While that installs, I'm going to go over here and manage uh, hardware firewalls. So Vulture and a lot of other hosting providers provide you the opportunity to use a hardware firewall. Um, you know, it provides a little bit of extra protection while the uh, server is installing before we have IP tables up and running. And also, if someone were to launch an attack against your server, it wouldn't even be able to really make it to the VPS or to the server because it would most likely get stopped uh, at this firewall. So we're just going to call this demo ripple firewall. Add that here. And add a few rules, so we're going to have to have SSH. Um, I'm going to allow that from anywhere for the moment so that we can get in with SSH. Uh, I also like to add uh, ICMP so that I can ping the server. Uh, and really, I think it's friendly for others to be able to ping the servers, you know, as well for the most part. Uh, TCP port 51235. 
and we're going to allow this from anywhere as well. And I'm going to do this now because the Ripple Peer Protocol actually runs on port 51235. And uh, we're going to set up our Ripple node so that we can actually have uh, incoming connections on that port from others on the network. Uh, we can do similar rules with IP6. Uh, we'll allow port 51235. And Ripple View does run on the TCP protocol. Uh, from anywhere there. Uh, ICMP is particularly important uh, with IPv6 connections. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about adding SSH right now on IPv6 since I'm going to be uh, uh, SSHing in through uh, IP4. Uh, so I think those rules look good for now. Um, and we will go ahead and check on our Ripple server. So we've got that running down here, it looks like. So I can go over here to manage. And in the server settings, I'm just going to go ahead and note down the IP address here. So that's going to be something that we use. I'm just going to paste that into a text document for now. That's something we're going to use a little bit later. Uh, if you wanted, you can set up a reverse DNS entry here. So we could say ripple demo1.rabbitkick.club. Um, we'll go ahead and bring up, well, I'll add this here real quick. So I will find that demo ripple d firewall, update the firewall group. So now our firewall is active on the server. And I'm going to go over here to view console. So the console will give us basically access, uh, you know, as though we as though we had a screen and keyboard and mouse actually attached to the virtual private server. Uh, so we're going to choose our install language. English United States is what we're going to use here. Uh, one thing that's going to be important for us is going here to the installation destination. So I'm going to click on that. And right down here in the bottom corner, what I am particularly interested in is encrypting uh, the uh, disk. So encrypting the actual uh, partition that the operating system is installed in and all your files are basically stored on. We're going to keep everything uh, on a single partition. Uh, you know, if you felt so inclined, you could set up separate home partitions or a separate temp partition or something like that if you, you know, needed it. Again, we're only going to be running Ripple on here, and uh, it's really best practices to kind of run, you know, one, one program per server. Um, so for our purposes, that single partition is going to be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and hit done, and it's going to ask us for a passphrase. And I'm going to go over here to our gedit document. And I'm just going to use this to save some passphrases and things like that. Um, so disk And I like to generate secure passwords um, using APG. And if you're following along on the guide on our website here, you can see we've gone through, we've chosen our server location, the VPS. Um, and the next thing is secure passwords. Uh, so I'm going to use APG, which comes, you know, installed with pretty much any Linux distribution. Um, you know, it uses some keyboard input as a seed to create a random password. So paste the command in there. And it asks for some random data, so I'm going to type random data. And it prints us out a password that is 30 characters long. I'm going to copy that password and save it over here. Of course, if this was a real server, I wouldn't be saving passwords in a text document. I'm just doing it for the purposes of this demonstration video. While I'm doing this, too, I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, some passwords for a rabbit user, because we're the Rabbit Kit Club, and for a root user. Uh, CentOS enables root accounts by default. Uh, if you feel so inclined, you can, of course, disable that for a little extra security. Uh, so we'll use that same command. So we now have passwords set up for a couple different couple different users and for our disk encryption. 
So for me, the fun thing is I don't get to copy and paste into the disk encryption box because I'm running it in this, uh, um, you know, window in my browser instead of an SSH session. So we'll get into an SSH session as soon as we can, so it makes things a little bit easier. So, and we've enabled disk encryption. I'm going to go over here, configure the network and host name. So we're going to get the internet connection uh, configure itself. Uh, using DHCP, so it'll automatically uh, configure IP uh, for and IP6 addresses and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of times I do like to switch up the DNS and use, um, you know, open DNS or Google's DNS servers, things like that. I'm not going to worry about that for this demo. All right. So we've got that. I'm going to go ahead too and configure uh, the ETH1, you know, intranet connection, uh, because we're going to eventually cluster this, uh, with Vulture, they give you your own little, uh, intranet address that you can use. So we will go and configure IP4, um, add a manual address, and that address that we're going to add here is uh, it looks like 101963. And we'll go ahead and add that IP. Don't need to worry about adding DNS servers to the internet connection. Uh, if you're doing more complex routing things, uh, you'll want to potentially add those. Uh, but for us, we don't need to worry about that. And I'm not going to configure IP6 on the internet either uh, because IP4 will suffice for our needs. So we'll go ahead and get that connected. It looks like it was able to do that okay. So we've got uh, the internet connection connected there. Um, it has IP4 and IP6 addresses. We'll hit done with that. And everything looks good for us to install. So we're actually gonna start the installation. And when we do, it's gonna ask us to set up our root password, which I've got saved over here. Um, so I will put that in. Hit done with that, and I'm going to go ahead and create a user now because uh, we don't want to be logging in or SSHing in as root. So we're going to create the rabbit user, and rabbit's password is. And I'm going to go ahead and make this user an administrator so that we can use this user's account instead of the root account. So we've got a uh, root account going to be created, administrator's account's going to be created, and everything is installing right there in the background. So I'm going to go back here, check where we're at with our guide. Uh, so we've generated some passwords. We did encrypt the hard drives. And as soon as everything is installed, we're going to log in with root access. Start getting things set up. So we we'll wait for this to finish up, and I will see you in the next video when we start uh, setting up the IP tables and uh, configuring SSH.